Hi, this is uh, in part a response to Girl Rides What, uh, latest, her latest video I thought was quite good. And something I've been wanting to do for about a week now, uh, haven't had much time. But um, what spurred me on to this was a comment made by a longtime subscriber, uh, whose name I won't mention. Uh, he's not an MRM, he's not a man going his own way, and politically he's very different to me. Um, he claimed that, and I don't want to make this a personal talk, but he claimed that um, there was something wrong with me, i.e. any man in, who, of a similar profile, considering my levels of education and my reasonable intelligence, that you know, happiness and success have eluded me. And that got me thinking, of course, because uh, I, like, I like thinking about things and criticism. Uh, and it made me think about the success model. And uh, what I really wanted to do in this video is to, to specifically talk about the so-called success model, what it actually is. Um, I also want to talk about happiness, contentment, male, male depression, male mental health, and uh, perhaps finally something about uh, psychology or the psych psychiatric industry and how it's applied to men. Well, for one thing, uh, you know, th this was not a logical syllogism. Uh, you know, intelligence, education, ergo, success, happiness. Uh, I don't know when that was ever the case, but that's that's not the major issue here. The major issue, of course, is we need to define what success actually is. Um, success, when you talk about it in that way, seems a rather nebulous term, and there seems to be some almost universal concurrence as to what it means. But I think it's much uh, better, or would be better, if we were to approach the concept of success in a in a, in a in, from a male perspective in a reductionistic fashion, reducing it to its base parts. And what are the base parts of success? Success essentially is simply, is quite simply the male competing in the biologically given dominance hierarchy against his fellow men for the attention of females. Um, earning a good wage, being successful, gaining recognition, so on and so forth. Uh, success is quite simply um, climb past your fellow men, uh, whether you would get along with them or, or not, in an effort to get the attention of females. That is what the, that is essentially the universal agreement of what success is. Uh, it's not actually talked about in those specific terms, but that's basically what it is. And any, uh, any person with half a brain will see that. Success, uh, therefore, is a, uh, something that really uh, should be questioned um, because if success ultimately is simply about outcompeting your fellow males in an effort to get the attention of females, who, as we know and have talked about thousands of times, we know they don't give a shit about us, and we know that they're only interested in, in our in our output, our resources, and our performance, and what we can do for them, um, it becomes very questionable, very doubtful, if the success model is something worthwhile to pursue at all. That is to say. Uh, if you as a male with education and intelligence were in a position to be quote-unquote successful, um, is there enough compensation for striving for that so-called success uh, on your end of the line? And I tend to think not. Um, even before, personally, I don't want to talk too personally, but even before I, I uh, became very intensely involved and aware of these issues, I was always deeply success, uh, skeptical of the success, success model. Um, I have enough intelligence, and I have two master's degrees and a bachelor's degree. I, I could be, quote-unquote, successful if I wanted to. But increasingly, as I got older, uh, the whole success model seemed to be a big failure. I looked around at me at the ruins and destruction wrought mostly by marriage and destructive relationships by so-called successful friends of mine who had striven essentially for what society extols and thinks is great, and uh, at the end of the day, um, no disres disrespect meant to them, they were lying in a pool of their own tears, really destroyed men, and they're picking up the pieces. Um, that is essentially what success is. The other problem with success is it's essentially a Sisyphean term. That is to say, your task amounts to the hamster running in the hamster wheel, um, that it never ends. Um, the reason, there are a couple of reasons why it never ends. There's always uh, more money to be made, there's always more competition, there are always more men to compete against. That's one aspect of it. But the truly Sisyphean aspect of success 
is indeed uh, the female's perspective on it. Because as we know from Briefo's law, um, the female will always and continually test what success is. Let's say you are fortunate at your job, you're an engineer, and you earn 100,000 USD a year, which isn't too shabby at all, and uh, you have good investments, and you're a kind, caring man, and so on and so forth. You've acquired a attractive, fertile young female as a partner. Uh, she will constantly put that success to the test. At some point in time, it won't be enough for her. A uh, case in point, I have a very good friend who is the essentially head of the Rhode Island Budgetary Office. He's exceptionally intelligent, particularly in his field of uh, public finance and economics. He essentially keeps the state together. He earns pretty well, all things considered. He was together with a woman. Uh, they were going to get married, possibly, for about seven years. Um, at some point in time, after that long duration of being together, she told him quite simply that it wasn't enough for her. She wanted more. She wanted to live in a bigger house, bigger place, she wanted more money, she wanted more luxury. Um, this guy is one of the hardest working people I know, and, and particularly in the budget season, he'll, he'll pull in seven day work weeks for two or three months on end. So, uh, total no brainer there, what you see uh, going on. And you see, of course, Briefo's law confirmed and uh, justified and vindicated. So, the success model, as I said, is it's a, success is Sisyphean in nature. It's not only Sisyphean, it's, uh, I mean, it literally is the hamster running in the wheel. Um, you might dangle a carrot. I've talked about the carrot dangled in front of the draft horse. That's what it is. Um, you will fail. You'll fail at the latest uh, in achieve, trying to achieve at least conventional um, ideas of success by uh, the woman who will exploit you and simply doesn't give a shit about you. And the other thing, uh, which I think is a great pity about traditional concepts of success are the fact that I'm, I'm very big on male camaraderie and staying together because quite frankly we don't have anyone else looking out for us and uh, there are a lot of good men I suspect that other men have clawed their way past um, and, and, and trodden upon in an effort to climb uh, within the dominance hierarchy and uh, it might have been better to have befriended them and rejected that. Um, you might have been, both men might have been happier in the long run um, so that is, in a nutshell, what the success model is and why I reject it, why, uh, despite my education and intelligence, I have not achieved lasting success or happiness. Um, and this begs the further question, what indeed is uh, happiness and how it can be achieved when you work within such a limited and uh, destructive model, a model destructive and ruinous to... Um, to the man as a being and to male identity. Quite frankly, success is not the ticket to happiness or contentment. If that were the case, many more men would be happier, but they're not. In fact, we're getting less and less happy as time goes on. Um, so how could any man in his right mind, with his mental faculties intact, think that success would be the ticket to happiness and contentment? Why wouldn't he be content with such a model, based on such a model, working within such a model? It uh, just doesn't follow. Um, it would only follow if a person were brainwashed enough to believe that there's some mystic, mystical aspect or, or magic to having intelligence and education, and then pursuing success, and then, of course, you're happy all of a sudden. Um, that's not how it works. And given that success is simply, as I said, uh, beating your fellow men to death uh, metaphorically in an effort to get the attention of um, the best possible vagina, uh, doesn't really amount to much. And calling 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 it anything else but um, a primitive uh, game, a war of attrition, essentially, is is really um, understating it. Uh, the success model is a is a war of attrition against men. It, it wears men away, and uh, it is a war against it's men fought fighting their fellow men. Um, so, if you want to redefine success, which I'm not going to do here, and I have no delusions to my ability to redefine it, uh, we're going to have to come up with something a lot better than what traditionally has been deemed success. Success um, needs to be thrown in the trash bin, quite frankly, and uh, I reject it. Um, because it never made me happy. The few years when I was working uh, regularly my, my ass off and was quote-unquote successful, 
well, that wasn't that cool. I was a miserable fuck. I had a massive amount of health problems, and um, the women weren't helping either, so go figure. And uh, that leads to the question of male mental health and depression and other things. Now, I like to be frank and candid in my videos, and I've been someone who, throughout my life, at various intervals of time, combated his depression. Um, and I, so I have experience with the psychiatric institution, as it were, the industry, and it is an industry. Um, given the fact that the success model in no way contributes to male contentment, in fact, uh, contributes to discontentment, makes men essentially miserable in its current form, or and probably has in the past as well, it should be no surprise that many men um, get very depressed. And uh, as girl writes what alluded to in her video, uh, suicide rates amongst males are far, far higher than they are for women. Sorry, let me take a drink. Given that, um, it really begs the question, when we constantly hear about uh, how women are much more susceptible, liable to uh, fits of depression, who suffer greatly from, great more, more greatly from mental health issues, um, I am deeply, and I do mean deeply, deeply, profoundly skeptical of that claim, given that we see that our society, as it's structured currently, is essentially tailored to the happiness and contentment of the female, to the total detriment, and uh, essentially ignoring uh, ignorance of, of the male. Uh, it just doesn't follow that, that females would have greater mental health issues. Um, what I do agree about is that it's certainly talked about a lot more. Many more women, uh, are t women's, many more uh, issues regarding health in general are talked about amongst female kind. Um, we all know that prostate cancer is much more um, vicious for men than breast cancer is for women, yet the, the numbers, the figures, the financial figures tell it all. And so we end up in a situation where now, regarding that aspect of health, um, and, yeah, I mean, think, I even have some suspicion now, and this is just my suspicion, and I, I, I think sometimes telling personal tales can be helpful. You know, up until a few months ago, I had a, what turned out to be a benign tumor in, the, uh, below my right jawline, which was successfully removed, um, and hopefully shouldn't come back. When I was still in the UK, I had so many misdiagnoses that I was, it was, it was insane. And only the last doctor and the fourth one had uh, come across, come up to the idea of uh, hmm, maybe this guy needs some ultrasound to see what's going on there. Um, I suspect if I had been a female with the same tumor in the same region of my neck, that maybe I would have been referred to an ultrasound right away. This is just my feeling, but um, I I think it could be justified on certain grounds, which I might explore at a later date. But getting back to mental health. Um, when a man is depressed, he's quite simply told to man up. And what I want to talk about regarding the, the so-called psychiatric industry is that it, all it amounts to at the end of the day, uh, for men at least, is a, uh, you, could, you can take it all, you can take all their theories, you can take their, their, their diagnostic books, which, you know, fill volumes, and you can really boil it down to, uh, I'm a shrink, I'm a psychiatrist, I know better, and here's my line, get with the program. Anything, anything they tell you is essentially a man up yet with a program slogan. Um, there, I've never had experienced anything differentiated from that. Um, friends of mine who've uh, been unfortunate enough to be depressed have also not experienced that. So it really begs the question, um, what, what are they trying to sell us? And uh, you know, is male mental health, is male depression a serious issue, which of course it is. And is it being taken seriously? I think not. If someone just tells you to get with the program without exploring the causes, um, the chain, the, the causal links, um, they're not really doing a service to you. In fact, they're doing a massive disservice. So that, that's the state of affairs regarding uh, mental health. It's sort of a get with, a get with the program approach. Um, if you don't get with the program, well, it's your problem. If you don't get with the program, there's always another alternative. Um, and that would be uh, uh, narcotics, uh, sorry, uh, antidepressants, um, which we still don't really understand entirely, but um, that's the last-ditch attempt. You know, a number of times I've made the 
uh, analogy of the male in society as a cog in a giant machine, and you can get rid of cogs and you re replace them. Of course, an efficient cog, you want to keep well oiled, you want to keep it well greased, and so you would do that. Um, if all other efforts fail, you know, get with the program, one effort, one uh, attempt to grease the, the cog that you might be as a male would be to uh, prescribe antidepressants to you. That's always an option. Um, that doesn't usually help. Um, and to when you have very clearly have a, a playing field that is that is just a cesspool for male discontentment, it doesn't follow that um, the only thing you need are a bunch of meds. Um, uh, interestingly enough, quite funnily enough, uh, I was this I was told this as well in the, this personal account, my last video, that I need to get on meds uh, for my situation. But uh, you know, get used to hearing that, and uh, because the, the fact is, no no one, particularly on the other side, the female kind, and men who buy into the system, uh, who think that manning up is the solution, whatever that means. Will really understand it, and so they'll just say, "Well, get with the program." Everyone just says, "Get with the program." The point of this video and and MRM videos in general, and Girl Rights What's, I would assume, video and uh, and men going their own way is that we 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 were getting with the program for a while, and then we saw the program wasn't very good. Um, and it needed to be revised. And until that revision takes place, we're not getting with the program anymore. We're done with it. Um, and go right to what is right. We are, we are exploring other avenues. Uh, one thing I, it might be likely to uh, take issue with is the, um, she talks about the pickup artist community. And I just want to briefly talk about that. I, I really don't see very much in common between pickup artists and MRMs and men going their own way. Pickup artists are beholden to vagina. That is their major goal in life. Um, so, and our goal, um, whether it's stated officially or not, is more or less um, commandeering ma masculine male identity uh, independent of uh, females. That is a, a male identity that exists on its own, that it doesn't exist in relation to the female. Um, whereas the pickup artist community is entirely that. that that's all it is. Um, I don't have much. Uh, communication with them, but every now and then I'll see a comment about how MRMs and men going their way should ally with so-called pickup artists. Uh, I don't see that happening. Um, why would you ally with the enemy? It just makes no sense. They're, and they're part of, they are, they are part of the enemy. They're just like the feminists in the way. They worship vagina. They're not on our side. Barbara Russ has a really good video about this mining, but I just wanted to mention that briefly. So, the success model and all the rest of it, and uh, hey, Something to add to the success model. Anecdotally, when I used to be, uh, play the game and you know play, uh, when I was a member of, of the so-called dominance hierarchy, trying to claw my way past others, I participated in, this, in the OK Cupid uh, online uh, uh, dating site, and uh, I can confirm what uh, Girl Rights What says in her video that you know, basically she said that OK Cupid reported that eighty percent of women on OK Cupid. Uh, think that men are not attractive enough, i.e. Be below them. Um, statistically, that just doesn't, doesn't compute, as she said. So, and you can run experiments. Uh, I had friends who were on these dating sites, you know, writing hundreds of messages messages to women, uh, average upwards, and no responses. Um, so, essentially, what you're dealing with, and I, I, I'm on a separate date, I want to talk about internet dealing uh, dating. Uh, uh, as a manifestation of uh, social, uh, societal-wide social pathology, essentially what you see with internet dating is, uh, you know, uh, women have completely lost lost their minds. They're totally off their rockers um, in terms of their expectations. Um, the question really is, well, how how were they anointed the goddesses that they perceive themselves to be? Um, well, I think feminism, in large measure, contributed to that. And uh, it continues to contribute to it. Uh, and of course, as Girl Rights What is, the ignored gender do, uh, does very well in his videos on uh, misandry in the media. Yeah, men are portrayed as buffoons, and that of course accelerates the process. Um, so yeah, I will talk about internet dating on a, on a separate video at some point in time, hopefully in the near future, because it is a very interesting uh, exercise in the study of um, pathologically uh, insane behavior primarily on the part of females, but also on the part of male supplicants. 
So, no, I, I think that was a really good video uh, that Girl Rights What put out just now. And, um, you know, the, the boom, the, there is no benefit anymore to following the success model. And in case the original poster, who's been you know, my subscriber for three years, uh, claimed that I have been sort of essentially losing my mind over the last three years, well, uh, I, 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 I would welcome a, a video response to, and I well, welcome your definition of success. If the success model is not what I've described it to be, um, if it is actually a means of achieving a happiness and contentment, uh, then by all means, put forth a video response. If not, then, well, then I, 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 I re I've stated my case, and I'll leave it at that. Um, men, men, men participating in the success model are unlikely to be happy because it doesn't, con it's not made to contribute to their happiness. And that's why we are leaving. Um, and to whatever avenue and venue uh, it might be for the individual male. Um, and on a final note, on a final note, as Girl Rights What says, that we, we are here on the internet in particular united around a common cause. Uh, and that cause is, as I said, commandeering male identity, supporting our fellow men, um, because at the end of the day, there's no one else out there to support you. Um, and because we don't have an in, we just very astutely uh, observed by girl rights, we don't have an in-group uh, male preference. But what we do have is we have our reason, we have excellent uh, rational uh, faculties of intellect, and we can recognize the justice and the appropriateness of our cause, and we can rally around that. Um, there will always be male dissenters, i.e., man giants, white knights, supplicants, and uh, you know. To me, they're just as bad as the women, if not more so. Um, but I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to deal with them here. So yeah, that's success. That's uh, that's the way things are looking right now. And uh, yeah, so that's that's my answer to your to your your, your claim. You know, I have to have this education and I have this reasonable intelligence, and yet I'm not successful. It's eluded me. Um, I've made it elude me. I don't want to be in that system. Um, because when I was in that system, I was even more miserable than I am now. So there you have it, and thanks for watching.